news comes first. This is ABC7 Extra. Good evening, I'm Saul Sainz, and this is ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. It's your voice, your vote. Early voting is underway for several runoffs, and one of those is the mayoral seat, pitting the current mayor, Dee Margo, against former mayor, Oscar Leeship. It's been a tumultuous term for Mayor Margo, facing several emergency situations for the city of El Paso. First was the unprecedented immigration surge, which brought hundreds of thousands of undocumented immigrants to our border. Then El Paso faced one of its darkest days when a lone gunman walked into the Cielo Vista Walmart and opened fire, killing 23 people, injuring dozens more. And now the borderland joins the fight against a global pandemic. COVID-19 has killed more than 900 El Pasoans and will claim more lives before the end of the year. Margo's opponent, former mayor Leeser, says more needs to be done and is vying to take the reins of city leadership to fight the coronavirus. That virus claimed the life of his 90-year-old mother, Roberta Lisa, Lisa rather. I did invite both to a, to a debate. Uh, Oscar Lisa declined and he preferred a one-on-one. -on -one. Joining me to talk about the upcoming mayoral runoff is Mayor DiMarco. The city is looking to spend $62 million less in 2021, Mayor Margo, than it did in 2020. We've been warned it would be a difficult year for cuts given the biggest chunk of the budget goes to salaries. What specific areas would you look to trim? Well, public safety is our primary uh, obligation of our bond, and incidentally, let me just say I want to extend my condolences to uh, to, to uh, Oscar Leeser on the loss of his mother. Uh, a lot of us are dealing with those kinds of things right now, and, and my heart goes out to him. Uh, we'll balance the budget as best we can. We had no tax increase this year. We reduced the 2021 budget by $16 million, and yes, I think next year is going to be a tougher year. But when we look at dollars and cents and where we are, and, and I go back to some of the things that we're still trying to accomplish, like the quality of life bonds and uh, the commitment we made for the $413 million public safety bond. And again, I reiterate, public safety is uh, approximately 62% of our budget. And uh, that's as it should be given our charter. So we will balance all of that. We had obligations financially, but, but for whatever reason lately, for, uh, we've been blessed that our uh, sales tax revenues are starting to go up, and that's about 18% of our, of our city budget with about 45% coming from property taxes, which we know will go down. But uh, the biggest concern I've got is that, uh, and I am sorry that, that Leaser's not here to go one-on-one -on -one with me, is that you know when that quality of life bond election was passed in, in November of of 13 or 12 and he took over as mayor of in May of uh, of May of, of, of 13 right after that bond was passed nothing was done on his watch and the frustration I've got is he did I think eight projects nothing related to the three primary projects the the multi-purpose special event center the the children's museum or the Mexican American cultural center and so everything was left to to me to pick up and what we found out is that uh, as I say, he did a total of eight projects. We've done 222, but we've had to we've had to pay for them as well. So unfortunately, uh, I, I, you know, I think he. Uh, when I ask people, what do you recall about Mayor Leeser's term, and 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 they come back and they kind of look at me funny, and they they can recall the the Lily Lamone uh, move move uh, movable chairs, the rotating chairs uh, actions, and how embarrassing that was. And then they remember the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Texas Rangers investigation of the walking quorum and the violation of the Open Meetings Act, but that's really about it. I just think that that uh, for all intents and purposes, that the mayor, the mayor Leeser was a was a, is a is a great car dealer, but he was just uh, overwhelmed by being mayor and didn't know really how to do it or or how to complete the task, and that's the unfortunate thing. It's been left to us to pick up the pieces to buy police vehicles that he didn't buy, to take care of uh, our infrastructure needs with more streets and fulfill the obligations of the voters when he didn't. And, and I guess the bottom line is he didn't listen to the voters. They came out at almost 70 percent, wanted the quality of life bonds completed and did nothing during his four I, years. I have more questions, so I'll continue with, the, with my questions. You and Mr. Leeser both have sh we showed successes during your tenure when it comes to job creation. Can you give me specifics on how you would go about addressing the economic challenges the city will face over the next four years? We've added more jobs and more capital investment since I've been mayor than, than he did, almost double. Um, 
If there's anything I have been doing for the last 20, almost 30 years, it's been recruiting jobs and industry and investment to El Paso. I did it when I was working with the uh, volunteering with the El Paso Chamber when we were the primary source for for uh, for job recruitment. Uh, I did it when when I was one of the founders of the Regional Economic Development Corporation, which is now morphed into the uh, to uh, the Borderplex Alliance. We we aligned our economic development division of our city over in the same office space, uh, office building as the uh, Borderplex Alliance so they could work hand in hand more closely in recruiting industry. That's why I went after Amazon. I mean, people, people said, there's no way you're not going to get the Amazon headquarters. Well, maybe not, but we knew we needed to, uh, our biggest challenge here is explaining to people who we are, where we are, and what we're all about. And we're, you know, as the largest U.S. city on the Mexican border in a region of 2.7 million people, it's, it's ludicrous that, that, that more don't know about us, and it's been my job since day one to make sure people understand who we are and where we are and, and the talents and the, and, the, and the benefits of doing business in our region. So we did Amazon, we brought in TJX. TJX is, the, uh, is TJ Maxx and Marshalls and, and Home Goods. Right. And that's going to be a 2 million square foot office warehouse distribution operation, $150 million of investment, 950 jobs, and 30 million in payroll. Right. That's the kind of things we need for this city. There appears to be, from some members of council, a lack of trust on the city manager and city attorney. Some have even voted against going into executive session to re receive legal advice and voted against acting on that legal advice. If re-elected, how will you address that gap between the city administration and some on the council? Well, the, the, the numbers or the people you're referencing on the council are the minority and, and quite candidly, they've been outvoted virtually every time. So I don't think they're reflective of the community or the balance of the council and we'll deal with that accordingly. It's unfortunate that in certain cases when there's not a level of maturity that you would hope from an adult behavior standpoint, there get things get personal and it's uh, and that's that's been uh, it's been unfortunate. Uh, uh, I noticed that Mayor Leeser keeps talking about the city manager. Well, uh, I think our city manager has prepared us pretty well for some of the things we're going through and frankly he hired him. So what does that say about his ability to hire to hire the right people if, no, if he's I'll, turning his back on. I'll have him answer that question. Let's talk about the downtown arena. The $180 million in the budget is nowhere close to what will be needed. Will you build it even if it costs $250 million given the financial situation now? Well, given the financial situation, we've said from day one that we can't, we can't do any more than we've done with the bonds at this juncture. Uh, what we need to be able to do is just like AT&T Center, uh, the AT&T uh, Cowboy Stadium, et cetera, is get private sector, public-private involvement with naming rights and sponsorships and those kinds of things, which I think we can do. And we can be very attractive on the border for that. Uh, but no, none, very few of the uh, items in the, in the 2012 Quality of Life bond election have come in on the budget expected. They also... I must add, unfortunately, did not include the maintenance and operation, meaning what is it going to cost to run these projects once we get them built? When we did the uh, $413 million public safety bond last year for a new East Side Regional Command Center, for a West Side Fire EMS, for police headquarters, fire headquarters, improvements in their training areas, we included in the total cost of those bonds, not just the construction, but the operational cost for each of those facilities. So what, what we voted on and what we're paying for is going to be fully covered. Unfortunately, that was not the case in the quality of life bonds, but still, there was a mandate by the voters at over 70% to, uh, to fulfill the obligations there. And unfortunately, Mayor Leeser did not listen to the voters at all and basically did nothing for four years. Let's talk about the fire and police pension funds. The state controller shows the funded ratio for the pensions is 78%. The controller also shows El Paso's unfunded liability for both funds combined is $400 million. Again, that's unfunded liability. With more firefighters and police officers nearing retirement age, what is your plan to address this? It's been an ongoing thing before I even became mayor. Uh, we passed uh, some bonds a few years ago that people voted on, that the citizens voted on to add more dollars to our pension plan. We're actually uh, funded at about 80 plus percent now with the changes in the market recently uh, as I monitor those actuarial program, actuarial uh, uh, 
tables and where we are from an investment standpoint. We're way ahead of we're way ahead of uh, of uh, Houston and Fort Worth and Dallas, and uh, we're considered one of the better funded cities in the state of Texas. But we will have to deal with it as we go forward, and I believe we will be in a position to do that financially without burdening our taxpayers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're watching ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. When we come back, we'll be joined by former Mayor Oscar Leeser. You're watching ABC7 Extra, where news comes first.